Kraft makes some of the most beautiful designs in endurance sports. But when it comes to their shoes, does the function follow the form? Or is this just a pretty shoe? This is the CTM Ultra Carbon 2, and it's time to take it for a run. Eleven point five eight miles total for the day, running some threshold repeats six times, six minutes on and one minute off, giving a proper road test to the CTM Ultra Carbon Two. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after just this first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. Kraft sent me these shoes to review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So, with that disclosure out of the way. Let's talk about the Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon 2 and where it's possible I will be comparing it to the CTM Ultra Carbon 1, which I also got a chance to run in last year. First, let's go over some specs on this shoe. This is a 40 millimeter stack height shoe. It is a tall shoe with a 10 millimeter drop, giving us 30 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. The CTM Ultra Carbon 2 is one of a series of shoes all using kind of the same platform and geometries of midsole and different shoes being kind of tweaked depending on what kind of inserts and whether or not they're going to have a carbon fiber plate and what their outsoles are going to look like in order to gain different types of desired effects to have some very specialized shoes. Some of the other shoes have uh, a P-Bax insert in them and subtract out the carbon fiber plate. This one we've got UD foam and UD foam for the midsole and insert and then a split carbon fiber plate inside this shoe as well. So there's a lot going on in this shoe. Moving to the outsole, we have a very robust amount of traction and tread. This is what Kraft calls the Ultra Track, and it gives you pretty much full rubber coverage on the outsole with some very aggressive lug and in a very aggressive lug pattern. Moving to the upper, we have a single layer of engineered mesh, which is very comfortable, very breathable, and I'm very happy to say it's also very soft. Last Year, my biggest complaint in the Ultra Carbon 1 is that this part of the shoe back here was very sharp and rigid and it was hard. even though it was somewhat flexible in this way it didn't compress so this part would always cut into the back of my ankle and Achilles and I knew every time I wore the shoe that the following like three four days I was going to have a raw spot on the back of my leg I'm very happy to report that the CTM Ultra Carbon 2 is very soft and I had absolutely no problems at all with this heel while still maintain a nice snug fit with the help of some bumper pads which are the same technique they used in last year and also just having a very nice fit. As far as the tongue goes, it's a very thin tongue, a little bit of mesh for extra breathability, just enough to protect the top of the foot from the pressure of the laces. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is the insole that goes in this shoe. It's a very unique insole. It's the same one that they had last year, but is this beaded material, which is very spongy, very soft, and provides a lot of that step-in comfort and a little bit of softness for your feet as you're running in the shoe. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a weight of 9.3 ounces and 265 grams. With those specs out of the way, now let's talk about what it was like to run in this shoe. Two things that kind of jump out at me when I'm thinking about this shoe is that the midsole here is pretty firm. It's definitely not a super foam type of squish and quick rebound. This is a very firm midsole of a shoe uh, and it has a very prominent rocker. So those are kind of the two sensations that I'm picking up right away. Having this insert that is nice and cushioned, I think is pretty essential for someone like me to be able to run in these shoes as someone who prefers a very squishy type of midsole uh, because I think that the shoe would be very difficult to run in without this insert providing that extra level of comfort in there. Now, last year, the first version of the Ultra Carbon used 
Crafts Vault Foam. And this UD Foam Pro is kind of the next iteration, the next generation of that type of foam. So while it does feel firm underfoot, like especially at some slower, easier paces, like my warm up paces, uh, as you're getting moving, it does compress nicely and give a nice amount of feedback as you're going through your gait cycle. And that's all also aided by the very aggressive rocker that starts really far back on this shoe as you're going through that foot strike. Now, shoes like this, and I've run in a couple of them kind of in quick succession lately, that all have very aggressive rockers that start fairly early. What all those shoes tend to do for me, especially when I'm trying to pick up the pace, is that it makes me kind of chop up my stride a little bit and kind of shorten my stride a little bit. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's just something that I've noticed that I have to do with shoes like this in order for me and the shoe to get along a little bit. Uh, the plus side of that effort and that slight little tweak is that it does feel like the shoe is really snappy and very fast and so even though the foam itself seems to me a little bit on the firm side i do feel like i'm rolling really nicely along with the shoe and getting a real sense of what this shoe is intended to do now when it came to trying to hit my paces at what felt like a threshold effort i felt like kind of like the output matched the input in terms of the speeds and the effort so i feel like the shoe is certainly can perform at these faster paces even though as far as like carbon plated racing shoes go it is a little bit on the heavy side but because of the traction on the outsole the biggest sensation that I'm getting in terms of like the ground feel is that I feel of this rubber and I feel the lugs that are on the bottom the amount of overkill that this really is for a road shoe really gets me thinking that this really isn't intended to be used as your flat and fast road marathon shoe but I think ideally its home is going to be on something where there might be a little bit of a variety of surfaces that you're going to be running on and so i start thinking that this shoe is more ideally suited as a trail racer so i think anything from a faster trail half marathon up to a 50k i think this is shoe is going to be really enjoyable to run in depending on the type of terrain that you're going to be encountering and i will say that as the conditions got slipperier messier or wetter that's when I found that I was having the most fun running in the CTM Ultra Carbon 2. And that's pretty much the exact same thing that I could say for the CTM Ultra Carbon 1. I enjoyed it on the roads, but when things got messy, whether it was snow, slush, ice, or water, that's where I felt like this shoe was just so much fun to be running in. The only downside being that this part back here just was really uncomfortable and made it so I couldn't reach for the shoe as often as I'd like. They've solved that problem while still maintaining all the fun of the original version. And for those longer distances, the improved comfort in the upper is certainly going to come in handy. If anything, I felt like the shoe was a little bit kind of too big, maybe not a, so much that I would size down, but it definitely felt like it was kind of in between like a normal, like as far as race shoes go, in between a nine and a nine and a half, kind of like a quarter size too big. But if you think about this as a shoe that you're gonna be spending hours in, that means that this shoe has plenty of room for your feet to expand and swell as you get later into the day. Now they do have a trail version of this shoe, which has even beefier lugs, something that I think is gonna be very well suited for the most difficult of types of terrain. But for someone who has kind of like trail running skills like I do as someone who spends most of his time running on the roads, this shoe is is going to be able to help me on most of the types of races that I'm going to be signing up for. So I think that as I go forward with this shoe, I'll probably be spending more time with it on the trails rather than I do on the roads, but having the knowledge that it does have good enough road manners uh, and the chops to be able to run quickly on the roads at higher speeds. So I can definitely pick up the pace in this shoe. I could definitely push harder in this shoe and get the shoe moving quickly, whether I'm on trails or on paved surfaces. Craft calls this shoe the new standard in ultra distance running. And I do think that they have something that is 
capable of running the roads, but going to be far more interesting on the trail. So I'm definitely going to have to put some additional testing in here before I can kind of round out my at least preliminary thoughts on this. If you have any other questions about the CTM Ultra Carbon 2, please feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?